Okay, I'm going to take you through how to do preparation of a manual graph. And uh, what I've got is the handout preparation of a manual graph. I've got my data here, and I'm going to be plotting total mass on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis. And you can see that my x-axis values go from about, let's say, 19 to about 26. And my y-axis values go from 8, although 8 to 40, we might as well just say they go from, so this is x-axis and y-axis, goes, let's say, from 0 to 50. And um, I just so happen to have a count on my graph paper from the, that comes with the lab. And there are actually 40 squares on the x-axis here and 30 squares on the y-axis. And what I want to do is I want my graph to take up as much of the space as possible without running out of space. So uh, here's how you do that. So you take the difference between your highest point, so we'll do the y-axis first, and your lowest point. And the difference is going to be 50 minus 0. And those are going to be, since that's my, that's going to be grams. Not that it matters, but I like my units. Grams. And I have on my y-axis 30 squares. And I'm going to divide that. So this is my range of y-axis values. And this is how many squares I have. And I've got my calculator right here. So 50 minus 0 is 50 divided by 30. I get 1.667. Let's just write 1.67. And I'm going to go uh, instead of, so I want to use uh, for each of the boxes a whole number, meaning 1 or 2 or 0.1 or 0.2. So I'm going to take this up to 2 grams per square because this is 1.67 grams per square right? Grams per square, those are my units. Two grams per square, starting at zero, and that's going to look like this. So on my y-axis, I'm starting at zero. I have two, and I'll put my units on in a minute. And each box is two, so four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. You don't have to number every box. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 50. Oops, I'm off camera. But you can see that I do have a couple boxes up here. I technically go to 60. You can label it anyway. 60. And my label is going to be... Um, total mass in grams. Okay, so uh, and that's my calculation for how I did this. Now on the x-axis I have 40 squares and my values are going from 19 to 26. So my calculation up here is going to be 9, well, 26 milliliters minus 19 milliliters over 40 squares. 26 minus 19 divided by 7, oh, what? Divided by 40 equals 0 0.175. Now, I don't know if I like those numbers 19 and 26. Hmm. How about we go instead a little lower to 15 and a little higher to 30? And my data will still take up most of it, but let's see if we get there. So 30 minus 15 is 15 divided by 40. I get 0.375. And I'm going to, so 0 0.375 milliliters per square. 
and I'm going to round that up to 0 0.5 milliliters per square. And now let's go ahead and fill in our x-axis, see if this works. So this is going to be now not 0, but 15. It's going to be 15 because for our calculation, we were going from 15 to 30. That's our range for 40 squares. And now each square is 0.5. So here, 2 squares over is 16, then 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And you can see I didn't actually go all the way over there because 0.375 would go over exactly to 40 and I made my each square a little bigger to get a nice whole number or a nice half number as the case may be. Something round. And this is what my graph's going to be. And my graph I'll take up more than 50% of my graph paper. So I want all of your graphs to take more than 50% of your graph paper. Let's see. So that's what we just, we just maximized the graph area and also determined an appropriate range to use. Your range may be different. Label the X and Y axis. Well, I labeled my Y axis, but I haven't labeled my X axis yet. And my X axis is going to be volume in milliliters, there it is, and provide an appropriate title. We'll do that, but now I want to actually plot my points, and uh, I'm on page two of the handout now, um, and we'll get to this part, but I'm going to plot my points now. My data looks like this, so, uh, oh, this one's actually going to be zero because there's zero coins and there's zero grams. So I'm glad I went to zero mass. Whew. All right. And at zero, it's 19.9. So zero grams and 19.9. All right. So this is 19. Here's 19.5 right here. And so I want to go to 19.9, which is four-fifths of the way over, so something like right there. And then my next data point is going to be 8.53 grams and 21.2 milliliters. So I'll go over here to 21.2, it's about right there, and 8.53, so let's see, so this is going to be 8, 8.5, there's nine, so I went about halfway there. So somewhere like right there. Oh, no, shoot. X that out. It's actually gonna be over here. Somewhere like right there. And then my next point is 22.3, 22. Point three, so somewhere right around a little more than half. Wait a minute. 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23 point, 22.5. Yeah, that's it. And now I'm going up to 17.19, 12.9, 12.9. Seventeen point nine is just below that. Seventeen point nine, there we go. Somewhere right around there. And then my next data point is twenty three point six and twenty five point seven six. Twenty three point six. Well, you get the idea. So I'll just work through these. 23.5, point five, oops, 23, 23.5, 23.6, so right next to that line, good, and then it's going to be somewhere up here, 25.76, so let's see, 25, 26, 
So right around there. Uh, yep. And then follow that over. So I'm going to be there. And then 23.6 going to be there. Somewhere right there. And I'll zoom out so you can see where we're going here. I guess my data is not taking it. Well, I have more data to give. All right, and then 24.6, right there. And 34.33, 24.6, 34.33, and 42.99, 25.9. 45.9, right there. Hmm, my data is a little small, but I'm gonna be okay with that. And uh, that is my data. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a best fit line. And to make the best fit line, I need my ruler back in my bag, my test kit, my 10 300 line. All right. And so here's what I'm going to do. I got my ruler and the best fit line, as it says, hmm, my line's a little bent there point wise, but my best fit line is going to have some of the points above it and some of the points below it and fall exactly in the middle of my points. Something like, and do the best you can here. You can see that it goes through this point. This point's a little higher. Um, this point's more or less, but maybe a little lower, a little lower, a little higher, a little higher. It more or less goes through all of my points exactly with like equal numbers below and above. That is my best fit line. We have to determine the slope. Let me tell you where it shows you in the uh, actual says prepare a plot of volume x versus mass y made by hand we have followed this draw a best fit line among the data points refer to preparation for a detailed well you can refer to this video too the density of the coin can be, term, be determined by the slope of the best fit line since it is the ratio of mass divided by volume an estimate of the slope can be attained by calculating the changes. Ooh, get down there. The changes in x and y for a given interval. So slope is delta y over delta x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. I'm going to choose two points that actually go through points on my graph. I'm going to choose this one right here, and I'm going to choose. Actually, that one looks pretty good. That one right there. And I'm choosing these two points, and we'll zoom in here, because the, my best fit line goes through points that I know. These points, like right on that corner, and then this one goes right on this corner. And if I read off my values, and please do mark the points that you're using for this calculation, and you can even draw lines. So over here, this is going to be 22. And my other point is going to be 4. So 22 minus 4. That's going to be my change in Y. And please make this right on your graph. Then here, this is, well, let's do this one first. So this one's going to be... 23 and these are grams and these are actually 22.0 and 4.0 keeping track of sig figs 23 points yeah zero milliliters minus right here is 20.5 milliliters and what I get when I do that math so this is going to be 18 over 1.5, 12, let's see, 
That's all I get is two sig figs out of this because when I do this subtraction, I get two sig figs. When I do this subtraction, I get two sig figs. Well, let's see. No, no, I get three sig figs up here, but I only get two sig figs down here, which means 12 grams per centimeter cubed. Like I said, there's going to be some error in this, and that's fine. And, uh, oh, the one thing I have not done is my title. A great title for this is going to be Total Mass versus Volume for whatever your coin is. Mine is Total Mass versus Volume for five dollar Jamaican coins. Uh, or five dollar Jamaican coins, yeah. That's a great title. And I'll zoom out so you can see my whole graph. Your graph should have all of these things on it. It should have your axes, it should have your titles, your axes, titles, that should have these calculations on it. Although if, the, if it's easier, you can put these calculations on a second page. And this calculation as well with the lines telling me which points you used um, to do the slope. Uh, when you watch the Excel one, you'll see that I caught this. So uh, my math earlier in this video I subtracted in my head and I got 1.5, but it's really 2.5. And to two sig figs, then my answer should be 7.2 grams per centimeter. Oh, well, it should be grams per milliliter too. Which of course, since a milliliter is a centimeter cubed, I can change to centimeters cubed. So this, anyway, I caught that mistake. Now I'm adding it to the end of this video. Now you will see that both my graphs match for their slopes, which is what yours should do too.